Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be doing a comparison between transit gateway and VPC peering. So both the things are used in AWS for creating a network connection between two VPCs. These two VPCs can be in same account or on different account. Similarly, these can be in same region or in different regions also. Now let's understand how it works with an example. So in this image, you can see I have two VPCs in place, VPC A and VPC B. Now, in order to establish a network connection between these two, we can create a VPC peering connection like this. So the moment I will create a VPC peering connection, these two VPCs can communicate with each other. Similar thing I can achieve with Transit Gateway as well. If I connect these two VPCs with Transit Gateway, it would look like this. So VPC A will create a connection with Transit Gateway. Similarly, VPC B will also create a connection with Transit Gateway and then they both can communicate with each other. So with two VPC, uh, they both will look a bit similar. So let's try to increase the number of VPC so that you can understand the situation better. Let's take an example of four different VPCs. VPC A, B, C and D. Now, in order to create network connection between these we can either enable VPC peering like this so all these arrows represent a separate VPC connection between the VPCs so let's say this arrow represent VPC A can communicate with VPC D similarly this arrow represents VPC A can communicate with VPC B so in this diagram you can see all these VPCs can communicate with each other but as VPC pairing is not transitive in nature so that what will happen now VPC A cannot communicate with VPC C because there is no direct connection between them it cannot go via VPC B to VPC C it is like uh, in order to establish network connection you have to have a direct connection between the VPCs so in order to enable that, it will look like this. So now uh, we have added two more VPC pairing connections from VPC A to VPC C and then similarly from VPC B to VPC D. And now you can see like this diagram now looks a bit complex because I have a lot of VPC pairing connections and this will become more complex the moment I will add another VPC into it. So just for enabling the network connection between four VPCs, see how many VPC peering connections I have created. I have created one, two, three, four, five, six. Six connection I have created. Similarly, if, if I will add one more VPC, this VPC connection will grow, right? So definitely there is a management overhead in case of VPC peering. Now let's see how that will look like in case of transit gateway. So in transit gateway, you simply have to do is connect all your VPCs with the central transit gateway hub. So this transit gateway works on hub and Spock model. What you have to do is you have to just connect your VPCs with the transit gateway. And then from the route tables, you can enable any network communication. So this is also transitive in nature so that uh, let's say we can connect from VPC A to VPC C or VPC D, any connection you can do because you have a hub in between so traffic can uh, you can route traffic in any direction using this now let's talk about when to use what when we should use vpc pairing and when we should use transit gateway so in order to make that decision let's see what are the parameters which we should consider before choosing from vpc pairing or transit gateway so first thing is ease of management so as we have just saw transit gateway is much easier to manage because there are less number of uh, connection which we have to make for every new vpc we have to just make one connection and it will work for complete communication right so in case of vpc peering we have to create a direct connection between the vpcs which makes it more complex so uh, the moment your uh, VPCs will grow, uh, definitely uh, you will face challenge managing those VPC pairing connections. So in this, uh, I will say uh, 
transit gateway uh, is easier to manage now the next thing is speed or bandwidth so transit gateway definitely adds a hop uh, in your network communication right so uh, if you want to send uh, network packets from one vpc to another in case of vpc pairing it will be a direct communication right but in case of transit gateway transit gateway itself adds a hop in between right so from your vpc the network packet will go to transit gateway then from transit gateway it will go to your destination vpc so definitely it adds some latency now in terms of bandwidth so there is no limitation in case of vpc pairing so whatever your ec2 instance supports transit gate using vpc pairing you can you utilize that complete bandwidth but in case of transit gateway definitely uh, there is a bandwidth limitation per vpc attachment right so it ranges from 1 gbps to 100 gbps uh, 100 gbps is the hard limit so uh, definitely uh, it has some bandwidth limitation but in case of vpc pairing uh, there is no bandwidth limitation so i will say in terms of speed and bandwidth vpc pairing uh, has an advantage the next thing is cost so if you talk about cost uh, there are two type of cost associated with uh, these transit gateway and vpc pairing one is your fixed cost so fixed cost is like the moment you have created a vpc pairing or the moment you have created a transit gateway connection uh, you will have to have oh, that fixed cost in place and after that there will be the cost related to your network consumption the amount of data you have transferred using those connections so in case of vpc pairing your fixed cost is zero you don't have to pay for creating any new vpc pairing right you can create any number of vpc pairings but you will not get charged until you are sending any data from it but in case of transit gateway there is some fixed cost associated right so let's say uh, you have created a VPC, transit gateway attachment and if even if you are not sending any data still you will have to pay something and data transfer cost i will say that is same in both the cases so we can uh, just nullify that so in case in terms of cost i will say vpc pairing is much cheaper so uh, this is a comparison uh, between vpc pairing and transit gateway so you can see uh, cost per vpc connection so in case of vpc pairing uh, you don't have to pay anything right you can create any number of vpc pairings and it will charge you nothing but in case of transit gateway you have to pay uh, 0.05 dollars per hour for every new vpc connection right so this is the fixed cost associated now uh, cost per gb transferred so this is the cost you have to pay for every additional gb transferred using these connections and it is same in both the cases 0.02 here and 0.02 here also now uh, let's understand with an example so let's say i am transferring 1 tb of data either using vpc pairing or transit gateway what will be the cost so here uh, your fixed cost will be zero right because you don't have to pay uh, for creating vpc pairings and your data transfer cost as um, 0.02 per gb is there so your data transfer cost will be around 20 dollars so in total you will have to pay 20 dollars per month for transferring 1 tb using vpc pairing now similar thing uh, let's see with the transit gateway so as there are uh, some fixed charges uh, this one so you have to pay uh, 108 dollars per month for every new vpc connection right after that data transfer cost is same here also so in combining those both uh, you will have to pay 128 dollars per month for same amount of data transferred right so clearly you can see like in terms of cost vpc pairing is much cheaper right because you don't have to pay for the connection you only have to pay for the data any of which is uh, getting paid here also but uh, this cost uh, you will be able to save right now uh, i have uh, given you uh, the pointers like on which uh, you have to decide when to use what there is one more thing uh, in terms of transit gateway so it is like uh, using transit gateway you can connect your vpcs internally at the same time uh, transit gateway provides you support for uh, the direct connect and the private links right so you can create tunnels with some external third party vendors uh, using transit gateway 
but in case of vpc peering that is not possible right so uh, that is uh, in this sense transient gateway has one more advantage it is like uh, for managing your complete networking uh, transient gateway will be the end to end solution but in case of vpc peering it is like you will have to manage your internal vpc connections separately and external third party connections separately so uh, now uh, you can take the call uh, based on these parameters right if you are confident enough like you can manage uh, a lot of vpc peerings using some automation tool like terraform or maybe some using some template in place then definitely uh, vpc peering is an is a cheaper solution bandwidth is also uh, high uh, there is no hop in between so latency is less so i would suggest like uh, you should always use vpc peering for your internal vpc communications and also you should have a transit gateway in place uh, because uh, you have to manage third party connections also so in whichever vpc you have third party connections please enable a transit gateway in place and uh, rest all the other places uh, maybe you can use your vpc peering that is my choice maybe uh, it will depend on the uh, factors which i just talked about so i have given you the uh, decision making points just align those uh, decision making points with your infrastructure and then uh, you will be able to decide like when to use what that's it for this video thank you